Hello, today I want to talk about piston mechanics. So recently you must have heard a um, few quote unquote theories have been put out, including mine and Myron Nerio's and Nazim Nazmus's theory about redstone mechanics, as well as Sankarn and Cellulance's theory about redstone mechanics. Now, I'm going to say this and I don't mean to sound pretentious or anything, but our theory is the correct one. It's what actually happens in the game code and Senkarn and Cellulance accept that but what they claim to do is make a theory that is basically like more extensive they did more testing on on a lot of fields that we didn't even consider um, but I mean I can easily explain based on the game code and um, and also they 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 tried basically to make a theory that would be easier to understand and more generally available to the public I guess um, and now the thing is their theory I, I think personally it doesn't really make a lot of sense because first of all it's flawed so so there's there are exceptions to their theory and just I mean if they if our theory isn't flawed and their theory has except well if our theory doesn't have exceptions and theirs does uh, the fact that theirs is simpler doesn't really make it a, an advantage. And their theory's simplicity is kind of arguable as well. Um, anyway, that's just a little bit about that. I don't want to get into that really. Uh, it's really a matter of opinion in the end of the day. I personally much prefer to uh, stick to the truth of what's actually happening in the code and what's actually getting processed. Um, if you prefer to go with a supposedly simpler uh, uh, explanation which there are others too by the way not just uh, Sankarns and Cellulances but if you prefer going with a simpler explanation rather than the truth then uh, yeah that's fine that's up to you whatever whatever works for you um, but anyway today I want to talk a little bit more about piston mechanics and uh, the reason I made this entire intro is because I want to uh, mention that basically I'm going to stick to the way we put it to the way the code actually runs it um, and I want to explain exactly how pistons work uh, and explain why we can observe some of the phenomena that we described in our videos, me, Myron, and Nasmus's videos. So first of all, you may have heard already in our videos, we claim that if a piston is powered by another piston, let me go ahead and have my mod over here, I'm just gonna do this, um, clear chat, so, if we take a look at this, this took five ticks in total, the, the lever turned on, then um, two ticks later this redstone turned on, and then three ticks later this redstone turned on. And there was one tick of delay between this one turning on and this one turning off. Um, so, we claim, well, we know that pistons extend in two game ticks in total. The whole extension takes two game ticks. However, for some reason, there's an extra game tick that's spent, wasted over here. We call it waiting. This piston is waiting. Um, and now I can explain why that happens. So this is to do with the update order. We knew this before, but just now I know exactly what happens. Uh, this is written in a little bit more detail, uh, maybe um, in, the, uh, in the technical wiki. I know I've edited the... Uh, update order uh, page and I've also created a piston mechanics page that I'm going to edit a little bit with uh, Myron as well. We're both going to write that one. Basically in the update order in the update order page, sorry, uh, you'll see that there's it basically details everything that happens in the, in the tick in order, um, including by the way when the world tick count goes up. And basically what you'll see there is um, what happens in the tick in consistent order is, um, let's see, how do I want to make this? Uh, tile entities get added, then block events are processed, then tile entities are, uh, let's do it like this, then tile entities are processed. So this order is pretty important, and in between these there are a few other things that happen, uh, and for example, tile ticks will happen over here, and if we move this one over here, entities, let's, I don't know, let's mark this, entities happen over here, and a few other things in between as well. And basically, depending on what uh, sent the power to pistons, 
determines how the piston is going to function. Now, a piston is is powered by these three steps um, that I said at the start. First of all, it, pistons are basically tau entities when they're extending and retracting. They're, those are called uh, piston tau entities or block 36. Uh, well, the block 36 is basically the block that contains the tau entity. And basically, when a piston starts extending, it sets uh, block 36, starts extending or retracting, it sets block 36 uh, blocks, actually, wherever, it's supposed, wherever uh, blocks are supposed to change by it. And then the thing is, after that, uh, well, the thing is that it doesn't actually set the tau entities for the block 36s, which means that those will only get added whenever the next uh, tau entity addition step actually happens. So tau entities are added fairly on or uh, fairly early on in the tick, and when those are added, basically checks all chunks, sees which blocks uh, should have a tau entity but don't, and add a tau entity in those blocks and uh well it goes by all blocks that were received a set block in those in their positions uh previously so basically if a piston was powered by any taltic so that's uh repeaters comparators torches and user input which happens here then the talent entity is going to be created in the same tick later in the same tick However, if the uh, if the piston was powered by anything in these stages, so um, caused by a, a piston or an entity or anything else really, then or even like a block updating such as um, I don't know what other block events are there that change blocks. Can't really think of any. I don't think there are any actually that change blocks other than pistons. Anyway. Uh, yeah, if it was powered by entities or tau entities or anything that happened basically later than the point in the tick where tau entities are created, then the piston will quote unquote wait one tick. Basically, whatever will happen over here, and then it'll finish the tick, cycle back to the start of the next tick, and only then the tau entity is going to be created. So that's one tick waiting, and of course, uh, here the thread dot sleep call is being made. Now, pretty much the same thing again happens with the block events. Piston schedule. Whenever a piston uh, sees that it's extended and is power and uh, loses power, or is retracted and gains power, uh, then it'll set a scheduled update called a block event, which is different than a taltic. Block events have no delay. They execute exactly in the order they were they were created, um, and they all execute uh, whenever the next time block event calls are being made. So there's no cap to them, like tau ticks have a cap of 1,000 per tick, and there's also no uh, no restriction on them, no delay. They all get processed whenever the next uh, block event calls are being made. So, like I said, pretty much the same thing. If a piston gets powered by a entity or a tau entity, then it'll have to wait one tick before this actually happens. Then in the tau entity processing part of the tick is actually when all the piston logic happens. This is what uh, controls the animations, the progress, saving to the, uh, basically saving the tau entity into the world. Uh, and this is, this is generally the main logic part of the piston. And uh, yeah, this happens very, very last thing in the tick. And if this causes a uh, this if this part causes other pistons to update like I said it'll wait until the next tick before these two steps happen and only then that piston will get processed so this is exactly what's happening here um, so again if I toggle this off it'll be instant of course as we all know but if I turn it on what will happen is uh, okay let's let's take a look at it like this the lever turns on then in the same tick this guy turns on and this guy turns on and oh well this happens and then this happens and then this it gets processed so when the block event call is being made this redstone loses power and then two ticks later when the entity uh, when the talent entity when the block 36 talent entity gets processed uh, this guy gains power now this guy and basically this person getting powered are the same thing redstone dust doesn't add any delay or any update order stuff at all redstone dust just gets executed directly whenever it's powered no matter what point it is in the tick uh, so anyway this guy gets updated um, in the talent entity processing part of the tick which means it's going to have to wait until the next tick before it can create its own talent entity and set its own 
uh, block event, or I mean, it's, it sets its own block event over here. This is when it gets processed, its block event. Um, and when that block event gets processed, then this guy is going to lose power, which is one tick after this guy gained power. And then two ticks later, this is going to turn from a tau to t again and power this piece of redstone. That's the explanation for that. Um, another thing you should know is uh, pistons dropping their blocks. So if we have something like this, we're all familiar with this. Um, let's see, I'm actually going to uh, wait a second. Let me do this. Okay, there we go. So we see that um, the piston only took one game tick to extend from this from the moment this redstone dust got power or lost power. To the moment this redstone dust gained power is one tick of difference over here. And why does that happen? Why does that not take two game ticks then? Um, and also, why does this not cause other pistons to wait one additional game tick? Uh, let me see if I can show you this. Yes, I can, of course. Uh, well, I could also put it here, I suppose. Should be easier. Okay, there you go. So, why do, why will this piston not wait one game, game tick? Let me show you. So, this turned off, then this turned on, and then this, uh, sorry, this turned off in the same game tick as this turning on. So, that means that this piston did not wait one game tick. Why does that happen? Basically, um, whenever the whenever the piston receives its block event call, it'll check uh, if it already has a talent T and if it's already uh, during the process of extending or attracting, then it's gonna check if it's a sticky piston. If it is a sticky piston, it's gonna uh, set the blocks appropriately to finish the ex the action that it was taking immediately. Uh, only if it's extension, by the way, and then it's going to uh, delete the talentities. So what does that mean? Basically, um, when when I place this torch here, let me just move this back over here. When I place this torch here, this piston registers a um, a block event the in the same tick. So uh, I place the torch. It's a user input. Then the in the same tick, the piston um, the piston does things it basically uh, sets the talentities and processes the block event and then one tick later the torch notices that it needs to uh, basically lose its signal and uh, that happens over here so that's this then this loses um, th that's one tick delay then it cycles and then that's two ticks of delay as a torch usually has but it was user input so it's only one tick of delay uh, so this signal is basically going to be a one tick long signal one game tick that is and at that point, the at this point in the second tick, the piston is again going to register a block event, and uh, nothing's going to happen here. But in the block event, it's going to say, "Well, I'm already extending, but I notice that I'm supposed to not have any power at the moment. So actually, let me just quickly stop extending, set the blocks in front of me, set the block two blocks in front of me to redstone block, um, and delete my talentities." And truly, when it reaches the talentity part of the tick, there's no longer any talentities, nothing to get processed. And therefore, basically, this happened in this part of the tick. And whatever talentities or block events or whatever that should have got, gotten processed in that tick caused by the piston already got processed here, meaning that the second piston over there will already be able to get processed in the same tick over here. Yeah. So that's why that happens. Hopefully, that's not too difficult to follow. I hope it's not. I think I did quite a poor job in explaining this just now. Uh, but it's not too difficult, honestly, to understand. There's just You can basically merge these two steps together. There, there's no real significant difference between them. Block events and then tile entities and uh, entities happen in between. Everything else happens before that. Um, so yeah, that's why pistons make other pistons wait one game tick. And that's why pistons that drop their blocks, so pistons that receive a zero tick, one tick, or two tick, uh, game ticks, that is, signal will cause other pistons to actually not wait one additional game tick. So hopefully that makes sense. I hope that it helps a little bit. And uh, yep, hopefully you learned something new. So I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.